All right, in last week's video, guys, just a quick recap. You guys watch us get this irrigation set up, all this drip irrigation set up in this new tunnel, which you can see down here. Um, if you did not catch that video, I would recommend that you go back and watch a series. I am doing a 52 week part series for Bootstrap Farmer on how to be a market farmer four seasons of growing in a market farmer. But I would recommend that you go back and catch up on some of those videos so you can kind of understand where we're at. But of those of you that have followed me on my journey all the way through, let's get started on the next one. Well, what we're gonna talk about is landscaping fabric. Now there are basically two different designs um, that I have personally seen of this. You're gonna see one which is a lesser quality, uh, cheaper grade. Most of this stuff you're gonna see, I did buy this through a commercial um, company but you will see this most at your big box stores. Something easy for you guys to go get. It is a landscaping fabric. I'm not going to unroll it here, but if you can kind of get the gist by looking at it, it's basically like a thick felt, um, kind of almost like a quilt style backing. It has its place. I would say if you had raised beds and uh, you had a couple raised beds or a small walk path or something like that, what that stuff is made for. It's not UV protected. It will degrade in the sun and the weather. What it's for is you want to lay that down and you want to put wood chips on top of it on walkways or you want to put gravel on it like drainage or anything like that. I, want, I bought that so I could show you what the purpose was, the differences between it, but that's not what we're going to talk about today. What we are going to talk about today is commercial grade landscaping fabric. I bought a thousand feet of it because I do have some outside beds on my DIY tunnel that we are going to uh, mulch also. But I recommend that you do your homework on this. Don't always buy the cheapest landscaping fabric because you may end up with cheaper landscaping fabric. You always want to spend a little bit more money and it's not much more. We're talking a handful of dollars more to get the contractor grade stuff that will last you year after year after year. You know the back half of this high tunnel here. We have five 50 foot beds here and this back half is going to be my determinate tomato side of my high tunnel. The reason why I want to use this landscaping fabric besides it looks very uh, aesthetically pleasing to the eye and you guys do know I am all about the way a looks of a high tunnel looks. Um, I want my tunnels or my outside growing beds to look like they're not say perfect but I want them to look like I tried and I did a good job and it's well organized. Um, us as human beings tend uh, have a tendency to look at things if they're organized, if they're done well, if they look good, uh, pleasing to the eye. You kind of get that thought of um, he knows what he's doing. She knows what she's doing. Uh, they take time. They take pride in their work. And when you do that, you feel better inside. Plus, it portrays out to your customers that you're actually taking more time and you actually uh, care about the food that you provide to them. So what I like to use, I like to use this, number one, is aesthetically pleasing. Number two, it keeps the weeds down. Uh, when you cover your soil, you always want to either plant into bare soil or you want to cover bare soil because the sun, the UV and the sun and stuff will burn through your nitrogen of your compost. You can see how dry this is. And it was pretty wet when we put it down a month ago. So, I mean, just being inside of the high tunnel here, the top uh, inch is laid out, is dried out. Well, now the bottom, you know, as we get about two inches in you can see how it's how it's darker color so it's still wet down inside but the top layer is dried out with the sides rolled up and the wind going through here but we do want to cover this so this is going to keep our weed pressure down it's going to be aesthetically pleasing to the eye and it's also going to cover the ground and keep moisture in the ground and that's what we need especially if you're inside of a big high tunnel or a greenhouse like this the, uh, even though it's a 30 or 40 degree day, I think it's 45 degrees outside right now, it is over 90 degrees in this high tunnel. And I have the sides down so I could do some taping in here, but it is super, super hot in here. So we may have to roll those up. But saying that, this landscaping fabric will keep moisture into the ground soil. And any moisture that comes out, whether it's from a hose or anything, will drip through that and, and also uh, keep the bed wet. So let's get started. Let me show you how I do it. Now, I make a jig that I use. I have a jig set on my little trailer that you guys have seen me use in the past where I can put my drip irrigation rolls onto. I can put my landscaping fabric onto and I can pull that. But since we are on the back side of the high tunnel, it really doesn't make any sense to pull 100 feet of landscaping fabric out and then kind of drain it through here. So I have made a jig out of some two by four. So let me show you that. Okay, this guys, this, this jig is really, really something simple. 
It's just what I had in my uh, in my garage that I use. Actually, it was a broken handle off of an old broom that I had. I've got a couple couple hose clamps here and a two by four and some and various pieces of wood here. All I did was make a jig. You guys can see that I used. I had a couple pieces of fencing off of a picket fence that I bought for another purpose. All I did was cut those into thirds. It doesn't really matter how wide. All this is for is a sturdy foot base. So this doesn't flip over. I just took pieces of a two by four. And I think this is 48 inches long. And these are 18 inches long a piece. All I did was screw it to itself. And I actually uh, got a hole saw out and I drilled two holes through it. So that way I could put, I could take my broom handle here. And I could run my broom handle through it like this. And the purpose of the clamps is, is to keep the broom handle from walking off and falling down. So what you do is you put one on the outside here, you put one on the outside of this other side and it keeps that from uh, from walking out. So let's get this set up. So this may move a little bit. You can also take that clamp and put it. So what you could do is, I've got this set up for, for various, various items. So what you could do is you could take this one right here and you could run your broom handle through without the clamp first. Just run it through, see it works. Great here. Run it through and then put your clamp on the inside of this handle here. Push that clamp tight, push that tight up against it, and then you just tighten the clamp on the inside here. And that will still keep that handle from walking out. But what it'll do is it'll keep this thing from jagging back and forth. My beds are 30 inch wide. So what I did was buy three foot landscaping fabric. And if I do have a little bit hanging over the edge, it doesn't hurt anything. We've got walk pathways. There's, it's really not gonna get a lot of foot traffic in here just in the pathways. So it's not gonna hurt anything. There we go. And all we need to do now is just grab it and pull it. All right, we get to the end here, and you can see that we have our drip irrigation here. I don't want to cover up these valves on the end in case I do have to get in here and do any kind of flushing of the system or I have to fix anything. I don't want to have to try to tear all this apart. But what I will do is I will fold this under on itself, as you can see, just like that. I will pull it to the end of the bed. Um, and I kind of try to take it a little bit even here, so I kind of split the difference on both sides of the bed here, just like this. And I will just take three or four landscaping fabric uh, staples, and I'll put one on the ground here. Always keep a rubber mallet. I like to keep all my landscaping staples in one bucket, and then I keep a rubber mallet in there. So anytime I need it, I can just grab that bucket, do the job, put the bucket back in the garage, and everything, every tool, is where it needs to be. It's part of that lean thing we keep talking about. I'm not doing, I'm just putting it on here to, for, to hold, this, hold this down. And the cool thing is if you buy good landscaping fabric staples from a good reputable company, you can reuse these year after year. I'm on my fifth year of these. These are coated metal. I buy um, four or five cases. When I started gardening five years ago, I bought 10,000 of these staples and I just reuse them. When I pull this plastic up from the field, I just put them in a bucket and I keep reusing them. They work great and I've never had any issues with them. Well worth the money I spent on these things. But once again, it's a contractor grade type of item. So it's not, they are not the cheap ones you get from your big box store. Trust me, they're not. Um, they're just a tick bit more money, not much. I'm talking pennies more, but I get to buy a case of a thousand or 10,000 at a time. Uh, and you're not spending that money. It's way cheaper than buying it from a box store. So that's all we got to do. So now what we'll do is we will go and cut the end of that plastic. I'll show you how I do that. And then uh, we'll go through here and just straighten it up in the bed. Maybe put two or three staples in as we go down just to keep the plastic down. Because with these sides rolled up on this tunnel, the wind is going to come through here. And the wind may pick this plastic up and down. And when we have our vegetables or plants or whatever flowers, whatever you're putting in here, 
you don't want that plastic whipping up on them. So we may go through here and put two or three more staples down just to keep the plastic on the bed. But I like to do this. You can see it's got the three lines. So it's set at one foot, two foot, three foot marks. I always put my drip irrigation inside of the middle here. You could offset your flowers, of course. You could do all kinds of cool stuff with this. I only use this plastic mulch on long-term crops. When I say long-term crops, stuff that's going to be in the ground longer than 60 days. Tomatoes, cucumbers, okra, squash, not okra, I'm sorry. Tomatoes, cucumbers, squash, zucchini, pepper, stuff like that where it's not a high turnover. You've seen people use them in other videos where they use it in lettuce beds to keep the weeds down. I don't have any issue with weeds in my lettuce beds. If you keep on top of it, you get a stale weed, said, weed seed bed. You can just, you can weed it by hand once a week, and that's what I do. I just use it for the long-term crops like tomatoes because I don't want to be through here on my hands in these weeding tomato beds um, every week. But uh, I always put my drip irrigation in the middle, and then we put the holes in here. Let's get set up, and I'll show you how I cut the end. All right, we are back at the other end now. So I grab my hammer, four more staples. What I, you can cut this with a knife. If you cut this with a knife, it, this is woven, remember. So it's going to be woven like this. It is going to shred apart. Um, the best way and easiest way I have found to do this is with a handheld torch. So you want to pull this plastic mold. It's got a little memory. You can see I can pull this. So I'm going to look down and I'm going to see the, corner, the bed. My bed is right here. So I know that my irrigation nozzles are the start of my bed. I can see them poking through here. So I want to pull this. So I know I want to go behind the nozzles because I don't want to cover the nozzles up in case I have to work on my irrigation. I don't want to have to pull the mulch up with the plants already in here to work on any type of irrigation. Now, if you've got a cut in your, in your main line or your drip irrigation line, yes, you are going to have to do something. But without putting landscaping fabric staples all the way down in just a couple, you can pull this and reach your hand in here and fix that if you have any issues. But I want to pull this nice and tight here and to see where I'm at. My valves are, are right here. So I know that my bed is going to start back here. So I'm just going to, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to split the difference. Now, if you take this, pull the fabric tight and just torch it in a nice straight line, the straightest you can. It will trim the edge of that. See how nice and neat that is? Now that will not, fra uh, that will not razzle off. It's the same thing as if you're using some type of nylon rope or anything like that. If you put a little heat on the end, uh, it will seal the end of those fibers and it will not unwind. So now you see we got a nice cut edge that we can use. Turn those valves up on our, on our bed. See, look at that. And if you don't like some of this, like what I will do is I will turn it back on itself to put a double layer of that plastic. Let me show you. You saw me do it down there. I will turn it back on itself. You can see the beds right here. So. I will just take this, kind of a weird angle here. I will just take this and just lightly turn it back on itself, just like this. I may or may not, I cut this one a little too close. Yeah, I won't do that. But you could turn it back on itself if you wish to make a, uh, to make a better angle, but I think we're gonna be just fine here. So get all your stuff wire where you need it. Take your fabric. It's as simple as this, guys. Simple. So let me get all the landscaping fabric put on the rest of these beds, and then I'll show you how I put the holes in it. Now, remember when we did this irrigation video, a video or so back now, our drip tape emitters are set at every 12 inches. So when I set up a new piece of drip tape, I like to cut my flush cut to go into these fittings right before that emitter. And the reason why I do this is right here. You're gonna ask, well, how are you gonna know where to put your plant spacing if you wanna put your plants every 12 inches or every 24 inches? How do you know where to go to hit your water? Well, you necessarily do not have to put the hole 
right where your drip emitter is. I like to do that, but you don't have to because when you run this irrigation system, sometimes you're running it as low as two hours. Sometimes you're running it as much as eight to 10 hours, depending on what you're trying to accomplish. I run my drip irrigation at anywhere from four to six hours, depending on the plant and depending on the time of year and the time of day it is. Now, if I'm watering with drip irrigation, the best thing about it is I could water in the morning. I could water directly at noon when the sun's at its highest and it's 120 degrees outside. It doesn't matter because this fabric's going to keep the water from evaporating, one, and the drip irrigation is just dripping one gallon per emitter per hour. So literally, it's not like overhead spraying where it evaporates. This literally is getting dripped into the ground. This is helping shade the ground and keeping that moisture in it also. That's another benefit of having it. But what I do is on my drip tape, I cut the end of my drip tape so that way I'm right at an emitter. So when I run it all the way down, I know this is zero. 12 inches is an emitter, 24 inches is another. And I do that because that's how I know where to put my hole. And that's always something good. You always got to think ahead because uh, of, of, of stuff like this. You may get this far ahead and go, oh, man, I don't even know where my emitters are because I've got an emitter here because I just cut the tape where I wanted it willy-nilly. How do I know where to go? Ultimately, it doesn't hurt the plant that much because it is getting enough water, but I like to put every one of my plants on that emitter. That's why I got the 12-inch drip tape. So I had 12-inch and 24-inch spacing. It's easy math. 12, 24, 36, 48. Easy, easy math. So what I will do is I will get my tape measure. I've got a 100-foot tape measure. This is high tunnel specific. I keep it in a bucket with my landscaping fabric staples. That way when I need it, when I do my beds, I always have it. I don't have to search for it in my truck or anything like that. I have an extra one that's in my construction stuff for my home. This stuff here is for high tunnel gardening only. Um, and if you could do that, that's the best way to do it. You can keep track of all your tools. So what I will do is, now this tape may not be exact, okay? Um, some of this is different. It just depends on the company. This is a, a name brand company, so it should be fairly close. If you're an inch or two inches off, three inches off, it, it's not going to hurt anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my stake in at the beginning of that. And if you go 12 inches, I know that's going to be roughly is going to be my first emitter. Now you're going to ask, all right, I, I see where you're going with this. How are you going to do this and not burn through your irrigation? You will burn through your irrigation if you don't do this right. Hence the reason why I only set my irrigation within this first middle yellow line here. What you can do is you can take, you can see this. You can see the irrigations right there. So you don't want to burn a hole right above your irrigation. You're not burning a huge hole. You're just burning a pocket-sized hole that you could put a tomato plant or a pepper plant or whatever you're putting in the ground in. So I know my first tape is right here up against this line. My second one is right there. This one I can see visually with that yellow line. This one I cannot. So what I will do is I will go in the middle of this, and I can notice that's there. So I will pull this. Just as simple as that. See how small that hole is? That's all you need to put a tomato plant in. You don't need a huge, a huge hole here. You can, you can, if you want to, all you're doing is inviting weeds that are within that area to find sunlight and come through. So the smaller hole, the better. Find your drip tape. Notice your drip tape there. Notice your drip tape there. We're going to go 24 inches. Just like that. 12 inches, 24 inches. Find your drip tape. You kind of get the the, uh, the gist of all this. Skip your 12, hit your 24, find your drip tape. Just like that. So I'm going to go ahead and continue all the way down the line here and get this set up. All right, I got all the plastic laid. Got all the holes punched into that plastic. One thing I do want to talk about is I know a lot of people may be concerned with the amount of plastic that we use in this world or the amount of plastic possibly that I'm using here on my farm. Here's the thinking behind that. I try and try and try my best to not use single use plastics here on the farm. Now, single use plastics would be something like 
possibly um, uh, water bottles, anything like that that you may use one time and then possibly throw away into a landfill or recycle. We want to try to stay away from single-use plastic. So a lot of this plastic you see, which is high tunnel plastic, of course, landscaping fabric, landscaping mulch, whatever you want to call it, uh, seed starting trays, uh, up pots that you would pot up tomatoes or pot up peppers. Um, try not to use solo cups whenever you can because that's basically a single use. Try to use something from a reputable company that has years and years of experience back behind it that you could possibly use those plastics for years and years and years. Like we talked about earlier, this landscaping fabric has a five to 15 year property to it. Depends on how you do it. Now, I would assume if you kept it covered like this inside of a high tunnel, you may get 10 years out of it, 15 years possibly. I have used this center piece of plastic here. You see it's a different color. I have used this plastic for five years now in different locations, outside and inside, and it still looks like new besides a little bit of UV fading. There's no rips or anything in it. That's why I went ahead and put it back in this tunnel. It's reusable, sustainably plastics that we can. Um, now, this landscaping fabric here will be punched every two feet like you saw. So if I put lettuce or something like that in here this year, which I do not want to use plastic for, I will just roll this plastic up, store it away in my garage or my basement, and I'll mark on it exactly what it's placed at. And then next year when I do tomatoes in another location, I will reuse this plastic so I won't have to buy anything. I had to buy plastic because we added this tunnel. All the plastic I've used is in other locations, so I've had to buy plastic because I added this tunnel. So I just wanted to kind of throw that out there, guys. Thanks for watching. It means so very much to me and my wife, you watching this series. Um, I would love for you guys to leave comments below. Even though Bootstrap Farmer, Mick with Bootstrap Farmer edits these videos, I still see these videos and I still try to comment on them whenever I can. So please leave a comment below if you have any issues or any questions about anything we've talked about in this series. Once again, guys, go check out bootstrapfarmer.com. They are the plethora for anything seed starting to high tunnels to pot up pots to anything cool like that. You need to check those guys out and give those guys a little bit of love. And possibly check out my other channel, Kansas Garden Guy on Instagram, Kansas Garden Guy on YouTube, if you want to see other videos and other uh, content that you do not see here on this video. Once again, guys, I will see you next week. Bye. And it just does work pretty slick. Um, Especially when you're by your... God dang it.